Hello, everyone. Welcome back for the second uh, slot of uh, Scala Love. Uh, now I have the pleasure of introducing not just one speaker, but actually two speakers from the Scala Center. So uh, let's, let's go through them one by one. So the first person is uh, Julian. Uh, Julian is um, one of the people of the Scala Center who has been there from day one. And he's doing all the things. So he's responsible for the MOOCs, uh, the Scala MOOCs uh, that some of you may have taken. Um, he is responsible for collections. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure he has many other projects that I forgot to list. Um, and then we also have uh, Daya, number two. Um, Daya is uh, the executive director of uh, the Scala Center. And she is concerned with um, community, with organization, with Scala Days, for example. So, uh, and today uh, they are going to talk about the Scala Center. So uh, please have warm uh, applause for uh, their talk now. Thank you, Lars. You took a minute away from me. So no, 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 just to how you hear me. Okay, that's perfect. So uh, you better not cut us off uh, in uh, 31 minutes. Kidding. So let's start. First and foremost, dear Oli, I hope you're hearing this now or you will hear it very soon. Organizing team, volunteers, speakers, participants, supporters, sponsors, like thank you so much for making this happen. This is um, a conference that brings hope, encouragement, and really li lifts people up in a very surreal times, <laughs> as, mm. as she mentioned at the beginning. Um, on top of that, you're proving a point. Conferences can and should also be viral. When I say viral, I mean virtual, but whatever. Uh, let's keep this practice even after pandemic is over. Congratulations to all, we made it. So greetings from Switzerland. Um, my colleague Julian and I, as Lars uh, indicated already, are very happy to be with you today to present something we're super passionate about and proud of, the Scala Center's impact over the years we decided to split our time in the middle. So first 15 minutes, I will start uh, by presenting more of a general context um, in which Scala was founded and how we navigated the stormy waters of the Scala open source sustainable development in the last four years and what is ahead of us. So this is more of an informative part. The next 15 minutes will be taken over by Julian, who will then bring your focus to the Scala Center projects, which is a very concrete aspect, um, for, uh, and speak about all those things that we have been developing um, with the sole purpose to help improve your everyday Scala development experience. Our intention today um, is to hopefully inspire you to help us help you uh, continue our journey and continue improving the Scala developers experience and grow a diverse Scala community. So before we completely dive in, um, I would like to um, ask you for a quick Q&A. And the thing you need to do is quite simple, grab your phone or you can do it in another tab on your computer. Um, key in menti.com and use this code to answer a couple of questions. I would just like to get to know what uh, audience we are speaking um, to, because obviously we cannot just raise our hands. <laughs> so for me to adapt and calibrate my talk, it would be very helpful. So if this is something that you already have done, I'm going to switch my tab and Wow, nice. So we are already having people answering. That's very, very cool. So please let us know how long do you program in Scala? Okay. This is nice. I love, 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 love this. Okay, so we have quite an experienced crew here. Okay. Very nice. Uh, just for the matter of time, I am going to give this whole uh, quick Q&A about three minutes. Um, Lars, let me know when 30 seconds pass so I can switch the slide. Okay, 
Um, so this is pointing to most people are quite familiar with Scala. I'm going to switch to the next slide because uh, we are limited in time, but I'm very happy to see that there are more and more people joining the, the Q&A. So the next question is, uh, what attracted you to Scala? And here you can just uh, make a sentence, like not a sentence, but the words, because this is like a cl world cloud, a world, word cloud. So yeah, keywords would be nice. Okay, whoever is joining right now, wow, okay. Yay, nice. Oh, so cute. Love. Okay. A project, easy to read, Martin Odersky. Very nice. So what we are hearing, okay, FP, FP, FP is growing. Um, so what we are seeing here is that <laughs> Like one thing we can already conclude, there are a lot of parts of Scala and it's really nice to see that many of them are quite attractive. Money, I love this. <laughs> Jobs, cats, nice, is really, really nice. Thank you very much. I'm going to go to the next slide. So this is one that I'm really curious about. Have you heard about the Scala Center before uh, this talk or yeah, making a public a bit? Not at all, okay. Most, okay. Nice. Very, very nice. I'm going to give it another 10, 9, 8. Well, I guess this is it. No, it's not. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Next slide. Um, have you been using um, the Scala Center projects? Oh, wow, nice. I don't know is exactly the group that I'm targeting today. <laughs> really cool. Okay, we go for, so I don't know, and maybe are basically, yeah, it's half-half, cool. Uh, have you heard about Scaladex? Let's go quickly. Wow. And... And one of the final questions is, have you heard about metals? <laughs> it's going to be 100% yes, I swear. Okay, three, five. <laughs> it's a st st statistical error. Wow, this is, yeah, okay. So this just goes to prove that most of the people that maybe or didn't hear about the Scala Center heard about some of our projects and are using them. So this is fantastic. I'm very happy about this. And um, this is where I'm going to uh, switch back to my slides. Um, this is just literally to, to check who we are speaking with. And I'm actually super excited to, to share the rest of just a moment. Present, okay. So uh, here we are. Uh, we are now diving into my part of the presentation. And the first slide says the big picture. Why the Scala Center in the first place? So Scala Center was founded in um, March 2016 um, for open source, for education is our mission, um, as the Scala Language Foundation at EPFL. It's finan financed and advised by companies that depend on the Scala open source and see the importance in investing back in its long-term sustainability. This came about as a response to a very tangible demand because by 2016, the community grew so much, it was calculated that there were about 500,000 professionals worldwide 
And with this great development for Scala, uh, the tensions grew as well. The community was in need of being heard, but not from academia or industry, but for, on it, for its own needs. So how did it even grow so much um, is the question. And well, it all started, for those who don't know, but many of you do, back at the beginning of 21st century, uh, in 2001, when Martin Odersky, with his uh, research team at EPFL, started the project Scala, the scalable language, and by 2004, it became open source. The, and, and, and it started catching eye um, of some interesting industry partners with a turning point in 2009 when Twitter goes public with Scala, which in turn opens a need to bring stability and maintenance to the compiler versioning. Thus, the opportunity um, to found a company that would uphold such a task. And in 2010, Martin, with many, many other people, uh, so whenever I say Martin, it's always Martin with a group of people. So don't, uh, <laughs> it's a disclaimer goes on and starts a company called Scala Solution that was mostly known after as a type safe and today it's uh, well known as light. Um, so once this started happening, uh, what we had was a growing community and a growing need of learning Scala because now we need companies are requiring Scala developers but not much knowledge is out there. So Martin and again, many others um, uh, were uh, creating the first course, online course MOOCs and uh, that will unlock in 2013 and that will unlock a very bottleneck which is educating more Scala engineers worldwide. So th this is basically what perceived the Scala Center and why we were founded or one of, one of the basis we are finding on. Now you're at, well, looking at this timeline and um, you're looking at this time timeline and you're wondering what happened in 2012 and why is it here and what happened in 2018. Well, as busy as Martin was, um, in 2012 he started a new project also at EPFL with his uh, research group called Dotty. And in six years, in 2018, um, it was announced that Dottie will eventually become Scala 3. And this is something that really uh, will influence our present and our future as a community, but also at the Scala Center. So throughout this time, there has been one major stakeholder that actually made Scala what it is today. And you don't see it here on the timeline, uh, but it is the Scala community. So, Without the users, contributors, library authors, uh, teachers, organizations, organizers, this would just not be the same. And all these people, um, and uh, sorry, and all those people um, that were tirelessly investing their free time in building this technology alongside above mentioned companies. So there is not much to say except hashtag Scala thank you and hashtag Scala love. We would not be here without you. But now back to the Scala Center. As you may have noticed, by the time uh, the Scala Center was founded, there were many stakeholders in the game for a long time, and it took some time to establish our place in this universe. Are we actually expanded research group of Martin's lab? Because, I mean, we are at EPFL. Um, are we just a second to light band bound to take on projects that they appoint to us. After all, they are in our um, adv advisory board. Wait, what? Scala Center is none for profit? Well, let me think. So that means that companies that are giving the Scala Center money, so then Scala Center is working in their interest. Hmm. So this was the situation that we found ourselves in at the beginning. And as I like to say, the identity crisis was real. But by now, four years later, uh, we established our lane. And in the next three slides, I will walk you through how we did it. So the three important aspects to be able to understand how and why we, uh, we function the way we function are the funding structure, decision process, and 
a bit of a small history that we've been through the organization stages we've gone through and what is uh, up next. So the Scala Center funding is based on two revenue streams. One is from the MOOCs, which uh, obviously you're going to, Julian is going to touch upon that uh, a bit more, how they were developed and why they're at Scala Center, at EPFL and later Scala Center took them over. And donations from the companies that pay a yearly membership fee to join our advisory board. Current partition is about 50-50%, and there is a potential to expand our funds, bringing new members on the board, so new companies that would like to uh, become uh, advisory board members. Uh, in the contract, it is clearly written that donations are donations. We are not obligated at the Scala Center to execute even the voted proposals, uh, although it never happened because our advisory board is quite uh, harmonious and, and we are all working in the community's interest. This all goes to say that we at the Scala Center are making our decisions independently, guided by the advisory board members and community needs. Now, um, uh, so here's the, the, the way um, we, oops, just a second. So how does this actually work? Um, first, get to know our team. Uh, we are currently, like our team currently has six engineers. Uh, one that is mostly in the education department, which, which is Julian. Three admin people. Um, and Martin. Martin <laughs> is our uh, academic director and a founder, but he himself is not uh, in a part of our daily dealings. We obviously go down the hall and we ask him a lot of questions, but he has other things to do as well. So we are in continuous, so our team is in continuous uh, communication with the community on one hand. Um, and on the other hand, we have quarterly advisory board meetings where we report and go over the proposals we created in the meantime. Advisory board consists uh, out of uh, industry partners, which we mentioned earlier. Um, we can say EPFL as well, because there are some, like some of us are at EPFL, so we, like Martin is a part of the board as well. Uh, community, and two community representatives. With all that feedback, and you can see here on our website, I just took a print screen, uh, like who are our community uh, advisory board members, contributing members and community representatives. And with all this feedback from the community on one hand and from advisory board, uh, we are the ones making decisions which projects we will continue on working that are useful and impactful, such as Metal, ScalaDex, ScalaJS, MOOCs, Prees, Scala 3 transition and many more um, to give back to the community. All these projects that we work on are vital, but no company would take it on because they're not directly profitable. And we cannot expect people um, to build and maintain those projects during their free time. So this is a space Scala, Scala Center is taking. Well, as previously mentioned, it took some time to get to a point where we can say, hey, uh, this was a concept at the beginning, but now after four years, we actually, we've done it. It's not anymore a concept. It's an actual truth. After three, four years, we got to a place to share with you today, hey, it's a success. Um, but it was, as I said, not uh, like that all the time. And in our very short history, this is how it looked from our perspective. So our organization went through, let's say, these very common four stages, uh, where in 2015, 2016, there, there was this initial excitement where we were raising funds and awareness, building the team, gathering new projects, and overall having this Elan uh, going forward. And not that long ago or that uh, far later, we came into this storming uh, phase, which was, you know, we were the new kids on the block. So we really needed to prove this independency over and over again. And as we were taking on some projects or exploring different projects, we were stepping on people's toes and 
that was not nice for our engineers, neither for the community or the companies, because it was really not clear at, at that time. Um, and so gaining trust was something that was quite um, important for us. Then we had to establish our, our, our own lane and find our authentic voice. And that in the Scala community is not something that uh, one really is up against that, uh, like, like a willingly, but we did it. Um, now we are in a phase that we can call norming because we do have by now stable funding, a uh, proven track record, and we are now somewhat a trusted brand, at least with the partners and people that we are um, already in contact and relationships with, and hopefully we will expand that. Now, as of this year and going forward, hopefully, like, as I would say, as of 2020 uh, and beyond, uh, hopefully we are going to keep growing our team, um, building on what we already successfully have been doing, the projects and uh, efforts in the community, hopefully coordinating more and more efforts and becoming a knowledge hub so that we can actually help you grow your projects and not uh, waste a lot of time looking around. So um, this is more or less, uh, we are coming to a point where I'm giving the another 15 minutes to Julian. Uh, and so far we've seen the Scala Center's place in the Scala universe, what uh, our mission is and how we actually execute that mission. But uh, as I said at the beginning, our idea is also to inspire you. Our intention is to make sure that after this talk, you can also know what actions you can take um, to improve your own experience and the Scala community. So if you want to be a part of our mission, your help is always welcomed. And there are a couple of things that you can do without a big effort that would mean the world to us. So some things that we can appreciate and benefit from is obviously new advisory board members. So companies that are depending on uh, open source and that would like to contribute back, it's always a good option to contact us. Whether they're going to become advisory board members or they're just trying to figure out uh, how they can contribute back because money is one part of it, but uh, contributions are way more um, welcome than that's my second point. So if you're in a company and you think that they are looking into options, how to contribute back to the Scala community, put them in touch with us and we can like uh, speak about different options and hopefully we do get uh, more advisory board members. Second thing is more contributors and more contributions. So, um, there is a list of projects that we recommend people to hack on um, so that we can keep pushing uh, the, the, uh, the community forward. And for you, you can either start contributing uh, on some of the projects that we point you out to, or you can just speak in your company with your colleagues and your friends and say, hey, if you're interested, check this list out and, and so forth. Those companies that have there are consultancy companies and have idle um, engineers. They are always welcomed uh, to, in, in the meantime, um, work with us. Uh, and finally, more promotion. You see, we are a tech team. We do not, we are not a marketing team. We obviously, uh, at one point when we have enough funds, we are going to expand in that direction. But right now, it's the sole focus of the Scala Center is hacking and making um, your Scala universe better. So more promotion, the better. Speak about us to your colleagues, to your friends, to people that you want to convert to Scala. Um, tweet about us. Um, and in general, sp spread the, world, the word. I mean, we really could use help there. All in all, this is where I stop. I'm not sure exactly how much time I uh, was taking, but uh, if uh, you want to hear more about any of the things that I touched upon, please get in touch uh, with us. You can send an email, ping me on um, Twitter, as you can see here, or um, go to our website. Most of these things are already there. So I'm now inviting uh, my dear, dear colleague, um, Julien, to- uh, So, so te te technically, Julien has five minutes left, but I think we can give him an extra five minutes. <laughs> Please go ahead. Yeah, I will, I will go fast. Th thank you very much, Daya. Uh, let me just share my screen. 
and you can mute yourself. Yeah. Okay, and uh, let's start. Okay, so it's hello, hello everyone. It's my pleasure to uh, present the Scala Center project, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your feedback about them. So we are uh, working in several areas, education, documentation, tooling, migration to Scala 3, and what I call runtime environment. We will go through every item of the list. Let's start with uh, education. Some concrete numbers first. We have published six online courses on both Coursera and edX.org, and uh, we get about 50,000 new learners every year, which is, which is nice. And they come from all over the world, which is amazing and uh, interesting. Most of the people are already professional Scala developers, so or professional developers, and they just want to strengthen their professional skills. So uh, that's why they, uh, they use our courses as a professional training. The courses are uh, accessible for free, or you can uh, purchase a certificate of completion, which is about uh, $50 per month. And one course uh, spans between one month and two months, depends how much time you, you have to, to dedicate. And uh, it just delivers some, something more official when you finish the course. Um, but as I've said previously, most of the time, your employer can pay uh, for you. So you don't, don't uh, feel free to just ask your employer to, to uh, offer you a Scala course. And uh, if you are not currently employed, you can, you can also um, apply for uh, financial aid. Both Coursera and edX have uh, financial aid uh, programs. You just have to fill a form and you explain your situation. So what can you learn? First, if you're like new to Scala or to functional programming, you, you should definitely start with the, the, our first course, Functional Programming Principles in Scala, talked by Martin Odersky himself, that will uh, teach you like, the basics of functional programming and the, and, and the Scala language and standard library. And uh, once you, you have done that one, you might be interesting, interested in um, going one step further and just <clears throat> strengthen your skills into one specific area like functional programming or parallel programming, big data manipulation and distributed uh, clusters, um, building responsive, scalable and resilient systems in ACA, or you can take the, the capstone project, which is not really a course, but like a a huge, uh, not a huge, but a six weeks long project um, just to challenge yourself. And so this is all, all we have for now. And uh, these courses are, are very successful, but uh, we have found a few issues about them. For instance, uh, it's a bit unfortunate that we, that you have to take like two or three courses to be productive uh, at work if you want to use Scala at work. So um, we would like to, to provide a single course instead. And also we have uh, noticed that uh, there are a few things that are not covered by the existing courses, very uh, practical things like how to model a business domain, how to handle errors, how to use a debugger. So to address these needs, we are currently working on a new course, which, we, which is named Effective Programming in Scala, and uh, that we plan to release uh, by the end of the year. So that's it for, for education. Now let's jump into documentation. The um, Scala documentation website is of course a community effort, but we also contribute to it. And one contribution that I want to highlight is uh, the new Scala book, which has been actually contributed by Alvin Alexander, but we have been um, deeply involved in the, in the review process. Uh, and the Scala book is a, a new tutorial that, that teaches you the main features of the Scala language. Another uh, working progress is a redesign of the Getting Started page to make it simpler. So um, I encourage you to, to go to the docs.scalalong website and, uh, and see uh, 
and, and tell us what you what you think about the the Scala book and uh, just uh, when when you, we will uh, release a new getting started page. Uh, I'm happy to hear your feedback about it. Next tooling. Um, so we, we we have lots of projects, more than those that are listed here. Metas, which brings ID features to uh, code editors and which is related to Bloop. Also, Coursier, which is a tool for dependency management. And we have other projects related to dependency management, like SBT Missing Link, that I encourage you to, to check out if you are interested. Uh, Scaladex, which is an index of the Scala libraries, which is useful to, to know what is the latest version of uh, that library or is it compatible with uh, Scala 2.13 or not? And SkateT, which is a web app that has been first uh, written by Oleg and that has been supported by the Scala Center. And this web app allows you to uh, compile and run uh, Scala programs from your browser and share snippets of, of code. I want to highlight a few contributions. Um, in Metals, the support for Scala 3 um, was merged uh, this week. So, and you, you can already try it. So I encourage you to just try it. <clears throat> for Coursier, we have added the setup um, command to Coursier. And the, the goal of the setup command is to install all the requirements on your system, like the JVM and a bunch of command line tools such as SBT to um, get you started with uh, Scala. And for Scala Dex, I really like this uh, new feature that we have merged, uh, I think, yesterday uh, that uh, gives a nice view of whether, uh, of which libraries currently uh, uh, support the T or not. Speaking of supporting the T or Scala 3, we are also involved in the migration to Scala 3. And we have uh, so these two projects which are a bit technical, but the goal is to improve the compatibility between the interoperability and compatibility between Scala 2 and Scala 3. And uh, soon you will be able to test them. And we have also released uh, yesterday again uh, this Scala 3 migration guide that I encourage you to, to have a look at. Uh, the goal of this guide, so currently it's very, it's almost empty, but the goal of this guide is to have a, a central place where people, uh, Scala developers who have tried to migrate from Scala 2 to Scala 3 can share their knowledge and their experience and people who want to migrate to Scala 3 can find uh, useful information. And last is runtime environments. And these are Scala JS and Scala native. And uh, just a few highlights about ScalaJS, the, the release of ScalaJS 1.0 and uh, Scala native. There is a work in progress to, to add support for runtime reflections. So I hope this gives you like uh, an overview of the, the kind of project we are working on. If you want to know more, I encourage you to, to uh, check out our website where we have a, a nice uh, project list. And uh, here are the links that you can already click to if you want to know more about some of the projects that I, that I have talked about uh, in the talk. Thank you. So now. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, thanks for the talk. Big applause. Um, as usual, I will just now post the link to the uh, QA room in the Zoom, Slack, uh, Zoom chat. So Daya and Julian, please go over there and uh, answer questions. Um, the talk took a little bit longer than expected, but that's no problem. Um, go to the QA room now or stay around. Next talk will start at uh, in about 11 minutes. So see you, see you then. Thank you, Lars, a, a lot. And everybody, you are amazing. Cheers. <laughs>